Hey everyone, it's Jensen Strock with WTOL. Thank you for joining me for some afternoon-ish tea. I have a few news stories I wanna to touch on before we get to the main story this afternoon. But before we do any of that, let me show you what I'm munching on. I'm still hanging on to those monster cookies because it's only been two days and I didn't feel like baking anything else this week. And today my drink is actually coffee because mama needs some energy. But I did get some whole beans from Maddie and Bella. This is the Brazil Santos and I, I got it on a whim and it's absolutely delicious so I would try that. And even my mug is local. I got it from Handmade Toledo and I absolutely love it. So all local, all the time. But enough with my eating habits. Let's talk news. The German American Fest has been given the boot and not in the way we know and love. Everyone's favorite gaff has been officially canceled this year due to COVID-19 for the first time in its 55 year history. No spetzels, no potato pancakes, no drinking a pitcher of Dunkel while pretending I know any other words in Fliegerly besides lot and schwim. It is a travesty. And on the topic of coronavirus, I know, it just never stops, does it? A mask order in Wood County has been issued by the state. This comes after the county was moved up into level red in the state's public health advisory alert system. I talked about all of this like two days ago, so go ahead and watch that video for more on what the new system is and what mask orders from the state actually mean. But here's a look at what specifically sent Wood County into the red zone. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine said Thursday that over the last three weeks, cases have increased in the area, and in that same time frame, cases have reached 63 per 100,000 people. 18% of total cases in Wood have popped up in just the last two weeks. And from June 16th to July 11th, the average daily new cases increased from less than one all the way up to nine. More than 89% of these cases have been in non-congregate settings, which DeWine said indicates community spread. This is because while cases spread quickly in settings like jails or nursing homes where people are grouped together, it's unlikely that those cases will then spread outside of those walls and into the broader community. And one other concerning trend that landed Wood County in the red is an increase in outpatient visits. From June 16th to July 2nd, that average doubled from three to six per day. People in Wood County will have to wear a mask in public starting June 10th at 6 p.m. And that's going to continue until the county moves back down into the orange category. But speaking of masks, catch that awesome segue. That brings us to the main story. Is there a mask mandate in Toledo? Kind of, but not really. It's all a hot mess right now, so let's dive into that situation. Mayor Wade Capsicabich issued a mask declaration on Wednesday, calling on all Toledoans to wear masks covering the mouth and nose when out in public and in enclosed areas like grocery stores, libraries, bars, a slam poetry reading. I don't know what you do with your weekends. He did include some exemptions, including medical conditions, children younger than six, or the need to communicate via lip reading with someone who has a hearing impairment. Plus, wearers may remove the covering to eat or drink, which, I mean, the. But can he do this? I mean, technically, no. What he is declaring holds no legal weight. These rules can't be enforced by law until council votes. And that, my friend, is a whole nother issue in itself. So what's happening with city council anyway? Well, get that mop ready, because someone's got some tea to spill. That did not sound as cool as I'd hoped. As I'm sure most of you know, four Toledo City Council members are facing federal charges due to their alleged involvement in a bribes for votes scheme. On Tuesday, Council tried to vote on this mask issue, but asked the three accused Council members who were in attendance to get the heck out because they didn't feel comfortable including them in the vote. These members refused to leave, and so the meeting abruptly came to an end. No vote, no mask, big scandal. City leaders have called on all four members to resign, none of which have so far. So, Mayor Wade is taking matters into his own hands and giving them an ultimatum. Resign by Sunday at 6 p.m., or he's going to tell the Attorney General. Classic. But what does that do? Well, going by a statement released by Wade himself, it seems that Ohio AG Dave Yost is in agreement that the best course of action, should they not resign, is to begin the process of suspension, which only Yost can do. Then, Mayor Wade Kapsikavich said, and I quote, Beginning Monday, July 13th, either because the four members of council have resigned or because the process for their suspension will have begun, Toledo City Council will be able to conduct its normal business and carry out the work of the citizens of Toledo. Which means that by Monday, if Yost does in fact get that suspension train a moving, these members are likely out of the mix until there's a verdict in each of their cases. 
But wait, weren't we talking about masks? Yes, patience, my friend. It'll all start to make sense soon enough. Sort of. Another vote on the Toledo mask mandate is set for Monday. It's very likely these members will not be present. That's a whole third of council. But according to Megan Robeson with the city, all council needs is seven votes for this baby to pass. And without the four facing charges, eight should be there ready to rumble. But that is all I have for you today for a breakdown of everything we discussed and a recipe to these awesome cookies. Just check out the link in the description of this video. And if you enjoyed this and you want to keep on sipping tea with me every afternoon, go ahead and like it, hit subscribe, whatever you're supposed to do, I support it. But with all of that being said, get out there, make informed decisions, and I'll see you next time.